People were saying, oh, let's go back to this country, that country. But for us, we didn't feel a thing. It was war, yes, we know about war and that's it. And my dad had to stop work and be in like in the civil, you know, like civil defense or something they had, they had to be in. We happily carried on life, not going to school anymore from that time. And then one day we heard the, uh, the air raid siren going, which meant we had to run quickly to the, to the air, uh, air raid shelter. And I remember that particular day when I was like playing away happily on the piano. And what I used to do was this, when the air raid siren goes, quickly go <laughs> take some sandwiches, you know, put jam and butter and everything and run down to the, to the uh, air raid shelter. And we did the same that day. And my, we had what we called amas those days, you know, Malay ama, we had very nice lady. She had brought her little girl along because schools were not functioning. So the little girl and I ran down quickly to the air raid shelter with the doggy, with the doggy, a rover we had, yes, underneath the house, in the garden far out there. My sister didn't want to go. <laughs> she and the ama went into the kitchen, which was like downstairs. You know, we had that type of house downstairs. And she, they lay down under, lay down flat, you know. <laughs> so we was hardly had I gone in, you know, honestly. Such a shock, such a terrible bang. I thought an aeroplane had fallen over us, you know, or whatever. It was so shocked and this little girl started screaming. I want to go out, Kulua, Saima Kulua, you know, that kind of thing. Sand was falling in. Somehow we managed to come out. And what did I see, you know? The whole, we had a beautiful garden, my mum kept it. The whole place was like a, a what, what do you call it? A, I can't get the word. A, like an earthquake had shaken up. It was completely flat. And just outside my uh, air raid shelter, a coconut tree had fallen, you know. Luckily not on top of us. And when we came out, we saw the dog was dead with the shrapnel. So quickly, the two of us, you know, the little girl and I, we were both little, ran into the house, ran down and found my sister and the ama. And so panicky we were, you know, we quickly ran to the house behind, where there was like a tunku and all they were. So they had an air raid shelter. Quickly, we went and under there. Everybody was praying. We sat there and waited and waited. It was a long time before the uh, all clear went. And then as we left, you know, and turned towards the house to return, we saw it was on fire. What had actually happened was a, a bomb had fallen on the house next door, the, the Paranakan's house. And the wind was blowing this way, you see. So it caught on to ours. Next door, sadly, the young married, the bride, you know, who had just had a little baby, she was killed. But the baby survived. So when I saw that, I was looking at it like that. My sister, so courageous, you know, she ran forward, went into the house, started pulling out furniture, chairs, pouring water and everything. So anyway, I suppose that was just limited. Then we came out and there were some Europeans, you know, who had a place, uh, one of the homes there in Hague Road. <coughs> they saw us and they took us with them. The house was raised to the ground. Everything we lost, you know, we had our beautiful piano, we had everything all gone. So we were sitting with them, waiting with them. In the meantime, my dad, and my brother, who were in town at the time, heard that Katong had been bombed. So they quickly ra ra rushed down. And just as they entered the driveway, you know, 
that's all the house all raised to the ground. So they just stopped the car in that position, went around looking for us. My dad was calling for us. So one of the people said, mm, I've seen your younger daughter there. And he got worried, what happened to the other one? But he soon found us with these English ladies, you know. They seemed to be looking after us in one of those houses. <laughs>